pan tool cabinet build part two. So we're going to do the plain tool and the saw tool. Let's jump in. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now this is part two of our hand tool cabinet build. So in part one we built the carcass of the main tool cabinet and the two doors. So I've gone ahead and done a little bit more work. I took care of some of the boring stuff. So I have the main carcass glued up. It's hanging temporarily on the wall behind me. So I made the French cleats and hung it up. I'll show you them before the video is out. They're nice and simple. There's not much to it. So I kind of did that off camera. And I've also added some walnut dowels to my mitre joints just to give the joints a little bit of strength and to add some hardwood accents. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build the plain till and the saw till. And it's gonna be kind of one unit that will sit into our cabinet. So you could actually technically build this as a separate unit to hang on your wall without the cabinet, but we're gonna build it to sit into our cabinet so it's gonna be removable. So we have some sapili here we're going to use for the sides of our till, the main part of our till. I have some Baltic birch ply, which is going to be the main body of the till, the backboard for the plain till. And then I'm going to cut some walnut strips to go in between the planes themselves. So let me get you in for a closer look. I'll take you through it. We have a rough idea. It's going to evolve as this video goes on. So I'll try and have plans for all this stuff um, when this video series is complete. But uh, yeah, let's jump in. I'll give you a rough idea what we're going to do and let's get on with it. Okay guys, let's start with the plain till. So very quickly go over this. I have it all cut out and dimensioned already. So how did I get to these dimensions? Well, I have a set number of planes that I want to put on my plain till. I also want to leave some space for adding some more planes. Now, I've allowed 10 mil gap either end to sit into my side wall. So I'm gonna have Sapili side walls that this will slot into. So we're gonna have a 10 mil rebate for this board to slide into our Sapili. Then I've measured from the start, I've measured 75 mil. We're gonna have a 20 mil um, piece of walnut in between everything. So a nice thick piece of walnut that we're gonna to screw to this and we're gonna be able to add pieces later on to hold extra planes. It'll all make sense as it comes together. So we've a 10 mil and I've measured 75 mil. Now, why 75 mil? Well, larger planes are roughly 70, just over 70 mil. So I left a couple of millimeters either side just for that walnut to expand and contract seasonally and it doesn't pinch the plane and there's plenty of movement. A standard plane is in and around just uh, 65 millimeters. So I've allowed a 70 mil gap here, again, for the same reason, just to allow that walnut to expand and contract and we're not pinching our planes. So I have a 75 mil gap here and a 75 mil gap here. So the big number sevens are roughly just over 70 mil. Any of the planes by half, so the four and a half to five and a half, they are also um, roughly 70, just over 70 millimeters. So I've left a 75 mil gap, a 75 mil gap, and then 70, 70, 70. And then we're down to our number fours. So I have fives and uh, sixes here. Down to number four, so this is a four and a half. So I want to add more tools, like I'm saying. So I've left this be 75, and then our smaller planes with three slots of 70 here as well. So that's how I dimensioned up the board. Hopefully that makes sense. It will all make perfectly sense now when you see this finally finished. So the reason I've added another 75 mil slot, like here, like I say, is for my number four and a half. I also want to add a five and a half plane to this, so that can sit here with these planes. So I've allowed some for some future expansion for my planes. And then we can put smaller planes up on top by putting walnut cross pieces in between these. That's why I'm gonna leave these nice and thick, nice and deep, so they're gonna be 20 by 20. Then we can add 20 by 20 cross pieces to sit other planes up high. And we have an angle on this as well. So that's the plane till. Like I say, don't worry if it doesn't make sense now, by the time I have this together, it will make perfect sense. So let's move on. Okay, so very quickly then, I've this is gonna be the side wall. Oh, this is gonna be our Sapili piece. So I've just hand drawn in some curves. Whenever I wanna make a curved um, object, I like to hand draw it in. It just kind of flows naturally. So if you can imagine this is the side of our uh, plane till. There's the rebate I have marked in there. So our plane till is gonna sit in here. I need to make three of these. So we've one either side of the plane till, and then we have one for our saw till. So one side of the plane till is gonna make up one side of the saw till. I have a circle marked here. So what I did was I've uh, got some 20 mil oak dowel and that's gonna work with the saws. So hopefully I'm getting all this on camera. So the saw is gonna 
sit on that like this. We'll have a block in front that the blade can lock into. So it kind of gives you a tilting saw tail. It's a nice, simple, elegant solution. It's very, very simple, very, very easy to do. And you can hang all your saws on this and you can just tilt them out and lift them off just like that. So that's how that's going to operate. So again, we'll have uh, two pieces of Sapili either side to hold up our saws and we'll have a block in between which will dovetail into the back of this So we've a little bit of joinery to do on this as well And each one that part of that block then will have a slot for each saw and the saw will just click straight into the slot Again, just a rough overview of what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve here And this will all make sense as it begins to come together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make this piece of sapili. I want to get one of them perfect right and then we'll use that for the template to make our other three pieces So let's get on Okay, so our first job then is to cut this piece out and let this be our template for our other pieces. So I want to get two pieces out of one section. So I have it kind of drawn in such a way that I can get two pieces and we can make the most out of our piece of sapili. So the total length of my piece is 720 millimeters. So my second piece is going to start there. So I've marked 720 millimeters and just squared line across. That's where my miter saw cut needs to be. And that leaves us just enough timber to get a third one out of this or get two more pieces out of this if we so choose. We'll see how this design evolves. If I feel like it needs a little bit more strength and we want to have two sections to our saw tail, we can. We have enough timber here to make another two pieces. So onto the miter saw, let's get this cut and then onto the bandsaw. We'll rough this out, we'll shape this one and then we'll use that as a template like I say to make the rest. Okay guys there we go, that's one of them roughly cut out so this is the piece I'm going to make first. So you can see the kind of idea now. That will be the two side walls of our saw tail and then we'll have, or sorry, our plain tail. So they'll stand just like that and we'll rebate in our tail into this. And then we'll have another one over here with the dowel in between them and a block at the back to put our saw in. So we have three of these, possibly four if we so choose. We'll see how it's gonna go. Again, this is gonna be an evolving design as I go along. As always, I have an idea, not quite a plan. So, um, yeah, so I'm gonna rough out this one. Now we've got a hand tool work to do on this. The plane in the back, I have some tear out that I have to deal with. It's quite bad on one of the pieces. So without removing too much stock, we might use this to go against the end wall of the cabinet and that, that'll hide the tear out. It's on that piece there actually. This piece is not too bad of a small bit here, but we'll try and hide it if we can't deal with it. So let's get making this now. So we've a bit of work to do on this, let's crack on. It's just a small bit of planing to do to this back edge. Favorite part of woodworking is using the hand tools. I mean, machines are great, don't get me wrong. I enjoy using power tools too, but there's just something about using the hand tools that's very involved, very therapeutic, I find. Here is where we're at. So this is the piece we're working on. This is going to be our main template. So I'm actually pretty happy with what I have so far. Um, I'm going to keep the straight front on it. I think that looks, I'm kind of happy with how that looks. So I want to keep that. Again, it's kind of an evolving idea and this is all very subjective anyway. But I like that straight front edge, so we're going to leave it. I have a nice curve here coming down to here. Now the only place that I have a problem is there's a slight bump in here where the curve is not consistent. So I have to work on that. Now I haven't got a spoke shave. Uh, spoke shaves are some hand tools that I want to add to my collection. So they'll be going into the hand tool cabinet. So what I'm going to do is use a Japanese saw rasp on this just to take that down a small bit. Then we'll take this to the spindle sander and we'll just work that curve just a little bit more. And I think we should nearly be good at that. And then this can act as our template. Okay, just a slight touch of the Japanese saw rasp. We don't have much to do. We just kind of want to take the little hump that's out of it so this line flows a bit better. These are an absolutely fantastic tool, especially if you want to get into guitar making or anything like that. For making guitar necks or for carving, these are brilliant. And they're only about 14 euros, between 14 and 20 quid. This is a Shinto rasp made in Japan. They have a rough side and a finer side and they really uh, remove material in a hurry. So like I say, they're great for carving. So 
So I'm just trying to get this to flow a little bit better. We have a slight hump to take out of here. Okay, that's not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. Now a spoke shave would be better, but I don't have one, so we'll do what we can. So there we go. Okay guys, there's my shape. I'm pretty happy with that. Now this is gonna be my template. Now we have a couple of options from here. I could just fix this piece to this one like this with some double-sided sticky tape or using the maxing glue and super glue trick and use a flush trim router bit. Now, I'm not gonna do that for the simple reason grain is moving in multiple directions. It's kind of got a really lovely grain pattern on this Sapili, but it's moving in several different directions. So I'm worried about getting tear out or knocking a big chunk out of this on the router. So I'm gonna do it all by hand. It's relatively quick and easy. Now they mightn't be 100% carbon copies of each other, but that's okay. It's hand tool woodworking. And if you ever watch a uh, Frank Klaus, the Hungarian woodworker who made his fortune in America. He's an amazing, amazing hand tool woodworker. And he always says himself, when you're working with hand tools, it should look handmade. It shouldn't look machine made. And he said, handmade stuff is never perfect, but it looks really, really good. So we have perfection in imperfection, and that's what we're gonna go for here. So if they're not 100% carbon copies of each other, that's no big deal. So like I say, use this one for my template and then make two more of these. So I'll take off most of that material there with the bandsaw and then we'll work back to the lines with the uh, Japanese saw rasp and the um, spindle sander. So there we go, let's do that. There we go, two pieces that are just about identical. So not too bad, happy days, and any little discrepancy, as they say, you won't see it from my house. So there we go, we're gonna make a third one of these, possibly a fourth, so I'll get on and make them now. And when I have them made, I'll get back, and then we can look at putting in our rebate for our saw till. So that has to go through this at a specific angle. And uh, yeah, let's get on to that. Okay guys, there's our three pieces made, so they're gonna go something like that. So we have two sides, either side of our plane tail, and then we have our saw tail, which we're gonna build in here. And like I said, we're gonna have a oak dowel in the front to hang our saws off. And then we'll have two probably brace pieces, one for shorter saws and one for the longer saws. So we'll dovetail those in to the backs of these to give that a little bit of strength. I'm hoping that when we cut the rebate into the two of these at the angle and glue this in, that should be a strong enough frame. If it's not a strong enough frame, uh, we might either add another dowel to the front of this just to continue the look across. Um, we'll see, what I'll do is we'll rebate it first, we'll see what we think it's gonna do and then we might put a dowel in the front of this to strengthen that, to hold it in the front, so we can drill it in, and we can drill dowels into the front, into the dowel bar itself. That's kind of the idea, that's what I'm playing with now. So now what we have to do is mark the both of these, so I've organized them this way because there's bad tear out on this one, so that's gonna go against the side wall, and there's some bad tear out on this side that's uh, pretty heavy, so we put that against the side wall so it won't be seen on that side. This one is nice and clean both sides, so that will look good in our middle. It's a thing, like I said, about really busy grain. It uh, can be a nightmare when it comes off the planer, and the planer did take a big chunk out of this one, so uh, yeah, we'll hide that. We'll reduce it as much as we can, and we'll hide it against the side wall, it's not gonna be seen. So now we wanna set our angle into this. I have that set with my sliding bevel, so all I did was take up, took a plane, lent it against the wall at a nice angle, match that angle on my sliding bevel, and now we're gonna match that to this. So let's get in close for this, and we'll mark the two of these up. This is kind of crucial, so we don't wanna mess this up. Okay guys, let's mark our two pieces for our rebate. We're gonna set this at an angle through both our pieces so that our plane tail is slightly tilted. Now, like I said, I have a slight angle on this. What I did was I rested a plane against the back wall of the tool cabinet at an angle that the number seven sat comfortably. I just matched that angle on my sliding bevel. So that's the angle we're going to use, nothing more to it than that. So we wanna just set this up now, make sure that we're marking the correct sides. 
So I'm just going to put an X there and an X there so that I know the rebates go into this soil. We don't want to mess that up. So just take this board, line it up to the bottom and to the edge. So I want to just, the top of the rebate to stop just in here. I don't want it to break through. I will be putting a walnut um, edge on this up top so you won't see the end of the rebate. Hopefully that's the plan. So we're just going to take my sliding bevel. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm just going to match that and that angle. I've actually matched that angle perfectly. What a fluke. So there we go, something like that. Now I want to come over a small bit more because I'm very close to the edge there. So I'm going to take that in a bit to about there. So that's where I want to be. Now we are going to lose all this space in the back of our cabinet, but you know, it's not too much. And I left a nice big shelf on it anyway. So let's just make sure we're hundred percent there. So that angle is good. So I'm going to actually just draw that in now. Okay, so now we want to match that measurement exactly over on this guy. So let's get our ruler. It's here. So, line it up exactly with that. That's good there. There we go. There, there's our two rebates marked in. We'll get the track and the router and uh, get these routed in. Okay guys, we're all set up to route in our rebate. I have the track set up so it's matching the rebate exactly. So we've checked, I've checked again. Now I'm gonna have to do it in two stages because it's an awkward piece to hold because of its shape. So I have it clamped up here and held down here. So I'm gonna have to cut it up as far as here, remove that clamp, put it back on down here and then finish out my cut. So that's how it's going to happen. It's nice and secure and held in place now. So I get down and cut this. It's going to take a uh, maximum concentration. So I'll stop talking. I'm going to make a bit of noise and we cut the first rebate. we have the plane till uh, in place so we did our two rebates and we have our angle correct so that's sitting in nicely into our two pieces they are now a little bit tricky to do that um that routing so really i take my time just make sure everything was clamped down and that the piece didn't move it's a bit of an awkward shape to try and clamp so we uh, cut that 100 right match the angles and then use that track to get a perfect straight rebate at the correct angle and they are sitting in there nicely now so that's a nice angle for my planes to sit at so they will sit up against that just like that and you can see it, it already stands by itself just at that angle so that's Perfect. So we're going to put in our walnut strips into this and next thing we want to do is drill in our dowel for our handsaw. So our handsaws are all going to sit in here now. So we have to put the dowel in and then we have to make our two brace pieces to go in the back. That's going to hold all our saws. So let's do that. Okay, it's just to mark out for our dowel then. I'm going to be 100 mil up and 50 mil in and that'll be perfect for the dowel. So it's enough to keep the handle. If I come up 100 millimeters to the center, it's going to be there. That'll be the center of our dowel. So that's enough space for our handle to tilt in so there's, it's not going to hit. So that's perfect. And it should be perfect for any larger saws too. And we're going to keep 50 million, which also gives us enough room. So it'll just tilt on the dowel like that. We'll have a block in here that the blade will slot into and that's how it's going to work. So 100 mil up and 50 millimeters in, that's going to be the center of our dowel hole on our two pieces. And I'm going to drill straight through because I kind of want, I want to see the oak on this side. So yeah, there we go. Okay guys, we have our two pieces clamped together. So uh, against the fence, everything's set up, so we're going to drill straight through the two of them and that will line up our dowel hole. It's actually a 25 mil dowel. I've been saying 20, it's actually 25, so a one inch dowel. Okay. 
Okay guys, so there we go, there's the dowel now is in place, that's our 25mm dowel, so you can see how it operates, the saw just sits on the dowel just like that, um, so it's nice and easy, it's, it's a very simple, like an elegant design, and it takes up very little space because your saws are all in side by side, you don't have to lift them up to take them out, so you can get stuff above them, you just tilt them out to take them out, so now we need to put the back pieces in, for the saws to sit into, so we we'll cut the saws into these and that'll sl they'll slot into this. These are actually oak offcuts I had from the TV cabinet, so they have holes in them but they're not going to be seen. So we're going to dovetail these now into the back of this. For the base, I'm trying to use up all my offcuts, so I'm going to I have this piece of oak that I'm going to use for now. So this is a piece of oak that wasn't really good for anything. It's off my oak resin table, my resin coffee table. So I'm going to square up the ends of this and just slide that in the bottom. That can sit in there. It's nice and thick, so we can drill some nice big holes with the Forstner bits and the Japanese hand saws can sit down into this and they can be caught here as well. And if I ever get some nice big hand saws, rip saws or crosscut saws, they can sit in here as well and we'll just screw in a piece up top to hold them in place. So there we go guys, let's get on and make some dovetails. Okay guys, I have all the dovetails marked out. I'm just gonna get on and make these dovetails now. This is not gonna be a how to do a dovetail video. It's just, uh, it'd be too long otherwise. So I'm just gonna cut them out. I'll show you some footage of me making the dovetails and we'll crack on and do it. Guys, here we go, the saw tail is almost complete. So I have it roughly assembled. We still have to do the sanding and glue up on this, but you can see how it's gonna work now. So I've just cut the curves of each saw into the back oak piece that we dovetailed in. So the saw just sits into its own curve line like that and it hangs on the wooden dowel. Now, the Japanese saws, like I said, we're gonna build a base for those just to sit into. And again, they'll just slot into their curves. Now, as always, I had a slight little mistake. Um, I am now eight hours in the workshop and I haven't taken a break, so it's my own fault really, just a lapse in concentration. So I'll show you now. So in marking out the dovetails, I marked this dovetail above the line rather than below the line. So I cut the hole in the wrong place. So I had to cut a dovetail piece to slot in here. So this dovetail was up here because the shoulder line was here and I put the piece, I marked the piece on this side rather than on this side. Just a momentary lapse of concentration. But they're in there now, they're not too bad, they look pretty good. Again, we're using scrap pieces to make this. So that's a saw tail essentially they are made up now. So I have a lot of sanding to go on this. So I get this sanded up and glued up and we start working on the plane tail. All right guys, so it's all assembled and glued up and just left in place. Now that's just sat in there, that can be lifted straight back out anytime I want but I just put it in there for the glue up so it's been held, it's been held by the sides of the cabinet itself. Everything is nice, square and true. And so the glue is just setting up there, so that's pretty good. And I have the repair piece in here, so you can't even see that now. It's just a little bit of a different color in the Sapili, but 
Shouldn't have happened. Again, a kind of mistake that you shouldn't really make, but uh, my own fault, as always. Who else's fault would it be? So now we want to make the walnut um, runners for our plain till. So we'll have a piece on top, then we'll have straight pieces up and down, and we're going to have a piece on the bottom with a small bevel on it, just so the planes will sit into it. So yeah, that's it. Let's get these pieces done now, and we're almost home and finished for this part of the build. Okay, so we have a bunch of rips to do, so I'm going to get on and rip this walnut into 20 millimeter strips and uh, with the track, so everything's set up ready to go, I have my stop ready to go, so it's just a case of running this through. I'll get on and do this, I won't bore you guys with it, and then we'll get assembling our plane till. Okay guys, our plane till is coming together nicely. So, this is what we've done. Let's take the upright for a second. I just clamped on my top piece just for measurement. So, I've put a 20 degree cut in the end of this, if you can see. So I ran the tracks on, put a 20 degree cut in it. That will sit on the bottom. So it slopes the top in the way now. So that sits in there like that. And if I put my plane on it, it holes in my plane. So it causes the bottom of the plane to slip towards the board. That's the idea. So if it's, um, it's you know, it's, I'd say it's a five degree slope in the way. So um, again, it'll hold the planes in. And then I just matched that on this end on the miter saw. So that slots in there nicely. So those angles are all matching. Now we just got to screw this thing together. It's been a long day. So let's get this uh, sanded up uh, screwed up, let's get a finish on it and let's see our final product, let's do it. All right guys, I have all my runners just clamped together, marked out, so I'm just going to drill them nice and quick and handy. I have a bit here, we're going to be using some brass screws to screw them in and um, we'll just count our sink the screws then, so I have them all lined up, so we're just going to get a screw through these. there we go more or less assembled a slight change of plan down here i left these ones short because i'm going to do something different with this base up here a nice narrow gap here for maybe some shoulder planes um and i'm going to get some block planes so they are slightly uh, narrower again than say a number four so we'll make individual spaces for them up there and we might actually put the router plane up here as well so we leave that space open now for future development and that's more or less the plane till done so i just need to put a few screws in the top a few screws in the bottom and we get a finish on this Okay guys, we are fully assembled and I have a couple of coats of Danish oil on. A few more coats to go, but uh, I'm gonna leave it there for now. What we'll do is we take this now, we'll put it inside in our tool cabinet, we'll get the tools into it and we'll call it there for this video. So this is um, a good place to jump off because you could make this without making the cabinet and you could mount this to your wall and have a plane till and a saw till. It's a nice, simple design. So yeah, let's get this into the cabinet now, get the tools in and let's have a look. Okay guys, there we go. We're gonna stop the video here for now. That's the hand plane and hand saw till done. So again, like I said, this could be a standalone project. So I wanted to have this as one separate video on its own because like I said, you could just make this, forget about the cabinet and all the doors and all that kind of stuff and just hang that on your wall, build a little shelf across the bottom strengthen the back a little bit more and this would be perfect to fit straight onto your wall if you don't need a hand tool cabinet and you don't have that much space you could certainly make this so i'm really happy with that the hardwood accents are really going to set the cabinet off it did just look like a big box of plywood which is what it essentially is to start with and uh, we're getting to use some of the hand tools now which is great i love the carving aspect of it i love using the hand tools 
Um, it's much more fun than using all the machines to make the carcasses and stuff. But it's nice and handy to use the machines to get the carcass together. Now I know I said at the start of the video that I would show you the French cleats and stuff like that. Um, I will in the next video. This cabinet has to come back off the wall again. It's not finished. This all has to be sanded and we have to do a lot of work on this yet. So I'll show you the French, the French cleats in operation and we'll hang this cabinet back up. So that'll be in the next video. I didn't get to it in this video because we're just going to leave it at the plain till and saw till I think for now. So there you go guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Okay guys, that does it then for part two of the hand tool cabinet build. We still have a good bit to go on this cabinet, including getting the doors, making all the parts for all the tools that go in the doors, getting some lights into this, making all the drawers. So we've got a dovetail work to do for all the drawers. A lot of hardware accents still to add to this, but I think that really does bring it alive, the hand plane and the hand saw till. It doesn't, doesn't look like a big box of plywood, like I said. So hopefully you've enjoyed that, guys. If you have, give it a thumbs up, please. That helps me a lot. Like, share, comment on the video. Any questions you have, anything you want to know about it, anything you feel I've left out, uh, I'll comment below. I'll either include it in the next video or I'll get back to you. I'll try to get back to as many people as I can. And if you're new here, think about hitting the subscribe button. Uh, jump on board because we're going to have more fun projects like this coming up. We have a whole workbench to build this year, hopefully. Some more tool reviews and a bit of good fun as well. I also have a whiskey channel, so if you're into drinking whiskey, if you like to whiskey tasting and a bit of crack and a few jokes, I have another channel. That'll be linked below as well, so join me over there too. So that's it, guys. I'm going to get out here now. It's been a long day. It's time for a whiskey. See you in the next one.